Okay, I'll start now. First, I want to introduce myself. Um, my name is John Piper. I've been trading since the 1980s. I went full time in 1987, and uh, during that time, I traded most vehicles, uh, sold options, went on to futures, managed a million dollar account at one point, uh, traded FX, gold, silver, or essentially pretty much everything apart from pork, pork bellies, I guess. Uh, so that's that over. Please ask any questions you wish to as we go forwards. Okay. Um, so welcome to this webinar. The uh, heading is Trading Psychology and the 10 Key Points. As I was saying, I'm going to throw out a number of key ideas today. So please ask questions if you want to ask me to clarify any, any point. Also, I'll be sending you, or happy to send you, a copy, a free copy of my latest book, The Way to Trade Better. Um, plus a few other bonus items which will be available to you. Uh, you want to get these, just send me an email at srlist at aweber.com. So I make a note of that. And it will automatically uh, send you some links so you can deal with that. Right, point one, plan. Um, most traders don't really plan. Certainly this applies to myself. They sort of end up trading fairly randomly based on whatever inputs they chance upon. Uh, this is not the road to success. Uh, in fact, a lot of input comes from their own brains. Look at that in a minute. Uh, when I started, I just started trading FTSE. I didn't really have any clear idea as to why I should trade FTSE. Uh, I did have a plan in that I, I worked out an option system, uh, which I thought couldn't lose. Clearly, I was disappointed <laughs> with this particular particular point. Um, but it, it did get me trading full time. I actually made 20,000 in my first uh, I think one month in the first six months. Uh, which is what, what writing options can do for you. That was a fairly staggering result, actually, uh, back in 1987. Um, and that was quickly followed by the 97 crash, which I actually predicted uh, using my preferred method, which is Elliott Wave Theory. Uh, I didn't trade it very well. I was a, you know, a novice trader at that point. Uh, so although, although I did predict the crash, um, well, not the crash. I expected a big fall. I didn't expect the thing just collapse <laughs> as it did. Um, and... Uh, I thought I was selling puts into the crash, which is not a very sensible idea. Uh, I managed to survive it, and it was certainly a very uh, vivid memory for me. But I didn't make a huge amount of money at the time. If I'd gone to a coma, actually, the week before the crash, woken up just after the crash, I would have made, I think, a quarter million pounds or thereabouts. But uh, this didn't happen, which may not be a bad thing. Anyway, the point I'm making is really that you need to plan. You need to think about um, what, how to trade. You want to think about how you want to trade what vehicles to trade. Um, this year, for example, I've been trading gold and silver. Um, my account is, uh, well, I'm up about six figures. I'm looking, sorry, it's four, sorry, five figures. Um, i hoping to make it six figures before the, the bull market is over in gold and silver. It's been very easy trading. The market's been, compared to equities, a much simpler way of trading. Um, and choosing the markets that suits you in that way is, is one one key input. So if you if you're thrashing around with equities, which can be quite difficult to trade, I mean trading the DAX for example can be a nightmare. We'll be looking at the DAX later, in fact. Uh, but just thinking about the way you're approaching markets can make a big difference to how you actually perform in markets. So that's my my, my first point: plan. Think about what you're doing. Think about what you want to achieve. And, and then go forward from that point. Right, so I mentioned earlier that the it's our own minds often work against us. Um, the reason is that we have a three-part brain. Uh, the instinctive parts comes from our um, dinosaur ancestors. Uh, the emotional part is more recent, and the thoughtful part is, is more recent yet again. Um, the problem is these three uh, brains act in different ways. Uh, the reptilian part is instinctive, then we have the emotional part and the thoughtful part. Um, I think the easiest example I can think of as to how these work is that uh, if you go to buy a new car, then part of you wants to buy a Porsche and part of you wants to buy something safe and practical or cheap and practical. And it's quite difficult for us to actually rationalize or, or at least get, get these three parts of our brain into harmony and when we're trading, we need to make decisions. Now, the, the entry, of course, is the easy bit. Uh, at that point, everything should be in our favor. But it's when the market starts to move that it starts to trigger instinctive, emotional, and thoughtful responses. Um, one of the big issues is that the instinctive part 
is immediate, you know, fight or flight. And it's very easy to find ourselves taking a trade or bailing out of a trade in particular, merely because we've had this, this, this fear instincts being triggered and uh, we just act. Similarly, the emotional side, uh, I remember once many years ago, I had a, an, argument, an argument with a friend of mine and I found myself trading uh, for no good reason. And I worked out that I just was, I was feeling a bit low because of the argument. I thought, well, I'll boost my, my emotional side by taking this trade. Um, and these sort of inputs happen all the time. Uh, so you need to be aware of the way your mind works. And in fact, I think, I think trading is probably one of the best ways of getting to know yourself better in quite a deep, meaningful way. Um, know thyself is one of the you know, one of the tenets of of, of knowledge really, uh, and trading is a good way of probing yourself in every every possible mental way to see how things uh, work for you. Um, so as I said, I've covered these points in instincts, emotions, thoughts. Um, basically, I would say that these three parts are not that well integrated. As I mentioned, buying a car, one part wants one thing, one part's another way. Um, trading, you know, the, the brain is acting in different ways. And the market is continually triggering greed, flight um, responses on all three parts of the brain. Now, one of the things I wish to give you uh, as a bonus here is an article called The Troubled Trader by Tony Plummer. It was the appendix in one of my books, and my first book, The Way to Trade. It sold about 30,000 copies, so it's quite popular. It's also in Chinese, Russian, Indian, and German. Uh, so, again, that article is very useful. So, again, e email me on that number, that uh, address, and... Uh, I'll send that to you. If you have any questions, please send them through. I should be getting some, I uh, can't actually see where the questions are actually, but uh, let me just see if there are any coming through at this point. Seems not, but he wants, audio is sketchy. Uh, is that still the case, Steve? Um, please let me know. It should be, well, it should be fine. I've got a headset on. Um, I don't believe I can turn the volume up. Is it, is it low volume or is it just sketchy? Anybody else have that problem? Okay, come back to me. I'll uh, I'll deal with that later on. Um, right. Um, there are also many ways of looking at the markets. I mean, Elliott Wave is one. Moving averages, price spikes, market profile, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And most people just drift into one or the other way without thinking it through. It's much better to plan. What sort of trades do I want to do? What methodology will suit me best? I mean, it's, it's quite important a way to try out dropping in and out. Um, hmm, that's quite strange. It, it, anybody else have that problem? Uh, because, I mean, the headset is fixed. So I, I, there's, there's no part of this which should be doing that unless there's some kind of internet uh, issue, which I'm unaware of. Um, I'll have to continue, because I, I, unless someone's got a suggestion to make about that, there's nothing I can really do about it, I don't think. So much better to plan, what sort of trades do I want, what methodologies will suit me best. Um, but you have to bear in mind that every approach that you adapt is never going to be perfect. So you're never going to find a system which is going to give you 100% trades. You're never going to find a, um, a system which will give you 100% successful trades. And that's, that's something we all know about. Um, so one of the key things, of course, is just dealing with losses. Well, we know we're going to have losses, uh, and psychologically that can be quite damaging. Um, I think it's been calculated that, that one loss causes as much uh, psychological pain as, as five profits. Uh, so obviously the loss has a bigger effect on us. Um, we tend to be more, um, we tend to react more to the loss than we do to the profits. Um, so we're not really, again, it comes down to the brain again, we're, we're actually uh, reacting in, a, in an illogical fashion, and, and that again is the point which can of course change the way we trade. Um, we could be making money in fact, but the losses just don't wear us down. Uh, so personally, my view is that uh, novice traders are best using a system initially whilst they grapple with the psychology issues, because um, a good system will keep you safe, the stops are built in. It'll give you an edge, uh, and this is an important thing. I, I do develop systems. I developed the A minus B system, which some of you may be aware of, 
Uh, it's been sold quite widely over the last three or four years. Continues to make money. Had eight eight winning trades in a row beginning this month, which is nice. Um, I'm not I'm not recommend I'm not I'm not trying to sell this to you. I'm just saying that a system is a good thing to have. Um, and if, if you're struggling at the moment, then get yourself a good system. Start to use that. You'll learn a lot from that. A lot about yourself from that because uh, psychologically we can find it hard to actually trade the system. Uh, um, and that can be another learning curve. You, know, you built the system, why can't you trade it? It's uh, uh, Again, it's the human brain at work. All right, second point. The market has used endless opportunities, but what's your time frame? Time frame is a critical one, I think. Many people, actually many people don't even have a time frame. They sort of leap into the market um, and they don't really think too much about how long they might stay in the market. Um, although a, a typical... A typical scenario is that uh, the trader will hang on to a loss uh, and he'll then take small profits because he wants a reward for all the, all the work he's doing. Uh, the small profits won't cover the bigger losses. Um, the next stage is that the, the trader learns to use stops uh, because he can't stand the big losses, uh, but he, he keeps them too tight, or he or she, I should say. Um, he keeps the stops <coughs> too tight and the it gets sobbed out fairly frequently which of course again you're spinning your wheels uh, so the time frame is important in the sense in that if you have a plan you know the type of trade you're going for um, for example if you're a long-term trader then you can't really use very tight stops you need to be using longer term stops um, if you want to stay with those positions we're looking at your stop policy uh, coming in a little while uh, summarizes you know you're not liable to play a good game of football if you're really a tennis player so similarly if you if your mindset's very short term uh, then trying to play the swings may simply not work right point three which is the right sorry but I don't know why the thing keeps popping up all the time uh, point three which is the right market for you in 2016 I've made a lot of money simply buying and holding gold and silver very simple index trading and FX can be far more complex uh, so only you would like to just trade a market which can give you clear, simple, simpler results. Um, I mean, it may, of course, not keep going up. I believe it will do, but that's something we're looking at again in a little while. Uh, but just looking at a market which is in a clear trend can be far more rewarding than trading a market just because that's the market you think you ought to be trading for whatever reason. I mean, certainly, that was, as I say, that was how I started to trade. Point four, wait for the trades with amazing risk reward. Too many traders feel comp compelled to trade even when the opportunities are not good. So far better to wait. Um, this is really, again, a, a mental thing. Yeah, we, we, we feel we're, uh, we're traders, so we feel we ought to trade. Well, we ought to trade, but we ought to wait for the trades. Uh, and there are people who just, who just feel, well, I'm a trader, I must do a trade, look around for a trade. Um, now, I mean, that can work. There are tra professional traders I know who adopt that kind of policy. They have a number of different systems. Every day they get opportunities thrown at them, which, which they can trade. <clears throat> Some of them will, will, will wait, you know, will get the, the first 500 pounds, and then they'll stop trading that day, for example, which is, is quite a good strategy, I think. Um, but if you're a, a novice, you're just starting up, then you've really got to think about what you're doing. You've got to, you've got to find trades you're happy with. And of course, that's quite difficult when, you, when your knowledge level is quite low. Uh, so again, having a system is quite a good way because that, that leaves a system has, has a sort of built-in expertise and it will you'll develop your skills using the system. So again, that's another reason for doing that. Point five, be consistent. The best way I know of doing this when starting out is to develop or acquire a trading system. A system simply applies the best rules, otherwise our psychology will tend to drive us to fairly random action. Uh, I mean, I imagine some of you are probably sort of familiar with the random action I'm talking about, uh, <clears throat> because that's the way most people trade, really. They, they, they are fairly random uh, until they've got the experience to to develop different, different approaches. Um, there are different ways of describing the route to becoming a professional successful trader. Uh, one such is that we start off greed orientated. Uh, that often works. Um, you know, we, we, we come to the market, 
<clears throat> and, and we start to trade. We don't know a great deal, but we're very confident. And, and that the begin luck exists as far as I can see. I mean, I've, I've had people double their accounts on binaries again and again and again, for example. Um, but we then take a few losses and we, we become for fear orientated. Um, and, and the fear oriented trader is, as I say, always using tight stops, always taking profits too quickly. Um, not a successful strategy. Uh, so the the next stage actually is uh, is is risk orientated. Um, but many traders, of course, drop by the wayside. Many many traders go through the greed phase, start to hit losses, and decide to bail out. They they realise that work's involved, um, and many people come to the market with the view this is going to be easy. Uh, and and when they realise it's not going to be easy, then then they they bail out, which which is quite a sensible decision if you like because you know the fear thing can take a while to deal with um, I think it, many traders spend a few years in that phase spinning their wheels uh, not losing money necessarily but not making any money either uh, and then eventually they come out of it I think uh, the easy way to come out of it actually is just to have more capital or to re reduce your position size because because once you reduce position size um, you then uh, you know the, the pressure's off and you, you relax and once you relax that phase tends to uh, tends to pass well, where have I got to now it's point five be consistent <clears throat> point six market psychology it helps a lot to understand some of the basics for example when everybody is long the feeling is very positive the market has to go down as no one's left to buy um, a good illustration is FTSE Nikkei peaks around New Year's Day I think the Nikkei was 1989, FTSE was 1999. Uh, one can't really imagine a more psycho psychologically positive day than the last day of the last uh, millennium. Uh, you know, we're looking at the all the successes the human race has, has managed to put up with, sorry, managed to create over the last thousand years, um, and we're looking forward to a new millennium. So the fact that FTSE peaked on that day, a peak which actually lasted. Uh, as I recall, right through to, um, I can't quite remember, nine. anyway, it's only lasted a few years, I can't remember whether the 2006 high was, high was higher or not, but um, the peak in 1999 was a major peak, and you know, markets, markets are a, a maelstrom of human psychology, and the fact that we peaked on New Year's Day, but I think it was the day before, <clears throat> Nick, I did the same thing in 1989, uh, I think he says it already, as far as uh, psychology is concerned. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, point seven, education and training. Trading is one of the most competitive arenas on the planet. You, know, you need to study your subjects. And of course, you already know this as you're on this at this webinar. You know, study is, is an important part. It, it's much a uh, m much better idea to buy a good book on trading. You can, of course, I can recommend my books um, and, uh, and, and read those books and apply them rather than throwing money away in the markets. I mean, I, I've met people who've lost hundreds of thousands of pounds in the market just just by, uh, well, by lack of knowledge. I mean, there's one one guy in particular I remember who, um, I think he was in his 60s, he, he was on in one share, I won't mention the name of the share, but, uh, and he had everything in that one share. He'd visited the share, sorry, the company at various sites around the world, um, you know, he'd been to the board meetings, he, he, was, he studied it intensely, and the whole thing turned out to be a scam, and he lost everything. And you know, the age of 60, he had to look at looking, looking for work, which is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, you know, there's, there's many things that you need knowledge if you're going to make money in these in these markets. That's uh, essential. Money management. Uh, simply put, if you risk too much on each trade, you'll be wiped out. And never get to learn the business. Uh, this is obvious. I mean, if you if you risk 100% on one trade every time then obviously the loser will come along and you get wiped out 50% pretty much the same thing you know you, you lose three times in a row um, then you're down to uh, uh, I think 12 and a half percent of what, what you started with uh, it's, it's an interesting statistic that many people aren't aware of but if you toss a coin a thousand times you're liable to hit a string of 10 or 11 heads or tails um, what this means in, in, as far as the market is concerned is that uh, you're liable, many systems have a 50-50 hit rate. Um, my system A minus B has a 60-70% hit rate, which obviously improves things, uh, but many systems have a 50-50 hit rate, um, and if that's, if that's the case, then that system will hit a string of 10 or 11 losses every every thousand trades. Now, how long that takes will depend on the frequency of the system, uh, how, how often it trades. But 
Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> Come to the next slide, I think. Um, right, point nine. Seeing the trading psychology at the key buy level points. Um, support and risk levels are key, and understanding the logic of price acceptance and rejection, the 66, 77 levels on the DAX, for example, um, essentially the the round numbers are important. So the, the 100 levels, the 10,500 on the DAX, for example. Uh, but there are traders who are looking to trigger out, you know, hit, hit stops all the time, and many traders place stops close to those levels. I find if I'm trying to uh, sell the market, and if I've got a stop at the moment on the DAX at uh, 10377, uh, um, and the market saw a low at about 80, you know, I didn't trigger that stop, it, and it's a stop to enter. Uh, and and that's that's the psychology. You, you want you want to get away from those levels uh, where people people put stops at the obvious places, and uh, you need to be a fair distance away from that. So as I say, for a, for a, an, a stop to enter, uh, if I'm going to go short, I'll be my stops will be at 66, 77 level. If I'm buying, I'll be buying at 33, um, with stops at the same level. <clears throat> Don't spin your wheels. Uh, the single biggest mistake traders make is not running profits. By doing this, they just keep taking small losses and small profits and die the debt of a thousand cuts. Uh, running profits is absolutely essential. Um, and we've all had trades, I'm sure everybody's listening, had trades where they could have made a lot more money just holding on to that, uh, that trade. It's, it's, it is the key skill, is running profits. All right, point 11, what is the key factor that all winning traders share? But first I'm going to play you a quick, quick video uh, of some trades, including trades today. If I did buy some silver and gold today, it was uh, going the right way. It's reversed a bit. I think I'm still in position. Piper with a video update and it's Monday afternoon the 26th of September. Um, I've said before that uh, we're all guinea pigs in some vast financial uh, experiment. Uh, the QE uh, method of printing cash uh, has avoided the similar experience to the wheelbarrow effect in Germany in the 1930s where people had to wheel wheelbarrows full of cash to buy a loaf of bread simply by uh, keeping the inflationary printing in the hands of the banks and other financial institutions uh, and kept it away from the retail clown as it were. Um, however what's happened is that all the cash has gone into financial assets and bumped up asset prices uh, and the, the big risk now is that at some point some shock will hit the system and the whole thing will collapse. Uh, now I think given time the powers that be could actually deal with such a, an effect but the problem is financial markets don't actually give you give you time. Um, they react rather quickly, and as we saw in 2007, 2008, the damage is done and it gets too late to actually do anything. Uh, this is the big risk, really, that things just happen too quickly and various rules and regulations need, need to be put in place before the um, financial authorities can act quickly enough to salvage the situation. Uh, currently, we have Deutsche Bank in the news, um, seriously under pressure. Uh, risk that it may in fact go under uh, and apparently no help is forthcoming from the EU on this particular which is quite surprising given given the size of the bank um, and that could be a shock but we also know about that shock I mean the the big crashes the big moves come in when we don't we just they're just not expected um, looking at the DAX this is a, a four-hour chart of the DAX you saw the peak here uh, just around 10.8 We've seen an ABC decline. I use Elliott Wave Theory as a way of looking at markets. Um, it's no better or worse than any other way of looking at markets. Uh, the key thing is to realize that whatever system you use uh, is flawed, and you have to trade around those those flaws. Now, we've seen this quite strong rally into the end of last week, followed by this little blip down. I thought that looked positive. In my report at the weekend, I said that we might well see a rally up from there. Um, in the event, we just fell away and there was no well, no reason to go long at all. I certainly haven't gone long. Uh, and it looks like this could be a new leg down. Um, 
Now I, I use certain levels on the DAX. I mentioned the 66 level so and the 77 level. Uh, so I've got orders to sell below there. Because I think if it goes below there, then it might well just keep on going. Um, as you see, we're bounced currently from the 80, 80 well, the 90 odd level, uh, which is what normally happens. Uh, the 66, 77 levels, and the 33 levels are useful because they they're beyond normal or normative support and resistance. And so, by putting stops, what I call my extreme stop system, uh, beyond those levels, uh, I often enter without having any kind of great uh, reaction against my, the positions. Uh, I do this because I'm, I'm I trade options on on the on the DAX as I mentioned, so I want to stay with my positions and I want to hedge the positions. But right now, uh, I've got an extreme stop below the market there, uh, with a view to just trade going short if this breaks down. I think I think if it does break down, it may just keep going. Um, how far and how fast? I've got no idea. But uh, right now, the DAX looks negative, and that's what I'm be trading at the moment. Right, although I trade the DAX, I mentioned my, my big play for 2016 is gold and silver. Uh, I've been long of gold and silver, long of gold and silver since the beginning of the year, um, and I'm up a five figure sum currently, and I'm expecting a six figure sum before this is over. I'm not only buying the, well, not only spread betting, I've also got various uh, stocks, including silver wheat, which is up, I think, 180% since I bought it, uh, various ETFs, etc., etc. Now the chart pattern here looks particularly strong. We've got a one, two, three, four, five wave there. That's wave one. Wave two. This is one of three. And now a very corrective looking form here, which suggests a breakout to the upside anytime soon. In fact, I bought gold today, or well, added to my positions today, I should say, because I've been buying it all the way up. Um, and uh, with a view, my stop is actually below uh, the lows here. And this looks like, well, it's looking good, but we just never, we never know for sure. Uh, let's go down leg, actually, have a look at the shorter term pattern. All right, this is the early pattern. Um, we can see the one, two, three, A, B, C, four. Now, a fifth wave here. The only worry here, as I said in my weekend report, is that having got above there, uh, five waves up, so we could blip down again to test this level around here. Uh, maybe, maybe not, but in fact, I did buy because it looked, it looked particularly good today. Um, but having seen five, five is up would be actually quite encouraging. It would suggest that uh, we have finally seen uh, the low of this particular digital decline. And uh, it hasn't really lasted that long, but it seems, seems to have, it's felt like it lasted a bit longer than it has for some reason. Uh, and uh, one more high above there would give us an, a clear five wave advance, which in Elliott terms is a positive. That's the chart of silver, the daily chart again. So we have a one, two, three, four, five, Elliott one, two, and a one, two, three. Uh, this still counts as a four, although the subsequent rally is a bit truncated. We have a one, two, and a th well, prob well, it could be a three, but it's a bit weak for a three, so it could be another one, two. We need a breakthrough there to confirm all this. Uh, so again, I'm looking to go long of silver, added to my position again today. So let's have another look at the, well, let's have a look at the lows since Right, on silver we've got a nice thrust today, this is, this is a 4 hour chart by the way, sorry 2 hour chart. Um, so I bought that uh, in profit at the moment, stops below there. Um, in Elliott terms this could be an A, B, C at the moment. We want to see that dispelled by a sharp thrust above these levels here. Uh, whether we'll see that remains to be seen. Right, so we had the uh, 1, 2, 3, rather truncated 4 here which is a slight concern. Then quite a strong blip down, which looks like an ABC, but not an obvious one, followed by a one, two, three. I think this is a four. Um, it's possible it could be a, a, a wave two, and this could be new, new impulsive action. Again, it remains to be seen, but it looks like we should see a move above here. We need to, we need to clear 20, 21 really to, to have a clear confirmation, but I'm currently long both from here and from lower levels, because I mean, I've been trading this all, all year, so it's uh, um, I, I'm well in profit on all these positions and the stocks and, G, and the ETFs, etc., uh, which is nice, of course. It's always good, always good to be in profit, um, and, I, and it looks like it's going to go higher, uh, but you can never be sure about these things. The 200-day moving average is well below current market action, which is of some concern, but right now the chart patterns look uh, look fairly good. 
OK, on that note, I'll call it today. So back with the report. Um, the next official report is, is Thursday morning, but I'll probably do another one. I, th I have a feeling this week's going to be quite a, quite a busy week. So I'll probably be doing more than my normal uh, three reports. So speak to you soon. Thanks for listening. Um, have a great day, and bye for now. Look at the trades. Uh, so, what's the fact that all winning traders uh, uh, share? And all the best traders I know have developed their own winning strategy and operated in a personal way. Uh, so, when you find your own winning approach, it, bear, it may bear no relation to mine, but it will share key characteristics, uh, like it'll have an edge, for example. So, I think the key lesson to take away today really is that uh, developing your own system, your own approach, is, is a journey. Um, the more information, the more studying you do on the way uh, is all helpful, but personally, I use a number of systems. Uh, in the next session, I'll be giving you my uh, uh, extreme stop system, which is extreme. Ext I mean, I've pretty much given it already, actually, but uh, um, yeah, the, the A minus B system is another one, and, and everything I do is systemized in one way or another. It may not be um, I not not every aspect of my trading is systemized, but it has it's all within a context where there is there are certain rules which I will not break. I mean, obviously, money management is one. You, you know, I never risk more than a certain percentage on trades, for example. Um, the I mean, the entry in a way is is, is often the most difficult area um, because we want, we want to get on the trade, um, but we don't want to get in the silly price. So, I mean, I, I, I have friends who are professional traders who. Um, simply will not even enter. They won't. They won't follow the market at all. Even if they get if they a huge move, they want to get the right price. And I can see the logic of that because, you know, if you're doing say, well, if you do a hundred trades, and, and every trade you're saving ten points by getting a better entry, then that's a thousand points over a hundred trades. So, you know, is there any point in paying ten, ten points, twenty points more, um, just to get on board when by adopting a, a you know a more rigid structure, you save yourself. Um, uh, you know, the, those issues. Uh, so I think that's the last slide, in fact. Let me just check. Yeah, so session two, back in 1985, that's when I started trading, uh, and the problems I faced and the problems you face now. I mean, there's, there's a, uh, I mean, when I traded, started, there were no, in, there's no internet, no smartphones, barely any computers, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's the next session. Um, so hope you enjoyed that, if you found it useful. Uh, please feel free, you've got, uh, you've got the link to uh, if you want the free book, uh, you can also, if you want to send me a, a message via that, uh, if you have any questions to think of afterwards, then please ask that, but um, otherwise, thank you very much for attending, and I'll speak to you again soon.